Okay. Show me. Hi there, guys. Welcome back to the Dutch Sea Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. For the fourth edition, the fourth video in this build series. In this build series, we are building the perfect FV quadcopter, freestyle FV quadcopter. And uh, when I say perfect, uh, basically the components I'm using in this setup have been proven to work well together. Perfectly, basically. <laughs> yeah, uh, as far as quadcopters can be perfect. So in the previous video, we installed our 4-in-1 ESC, uh, which is a Mamba slash Dayton F50 50 amp 4-in-1 ESC. And that came with this here flight controller, which is an, also a Mamba, obviously, F7 uh, 22S flight controller. So this is a package deal, a stack that you uh, buy as a whole. Uh, the capacitor also came with it. And uh, so yeah, in this video we're going to be installing our flight controller. And this video will be as short as possible. The previous video was a bit long, 48 minutes or so. That was pretty long. And in this video I'm mostly gonna be giving you some tips on the installation of your flight controller. See, the physical installation of the flight controller itself is pretty simple. There, done! <laughs> yeah! And uh, we've got a ribbon cable at the front and uh, yay! That was it, that was the entire video. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of tips Especially if you are new to building quadcopters, uh, I think they'll be useful to you. In separate videos I'm going to be installing, for instance, the receiver, the video transmitter, and I'm going to hook up the, uh, the camera. Um, I'm going to probably do the VTX, the video transmitter, and the camera installation in one video, and a video about the installation and configuration of your radio and receiver in one video. So again, in this video we're basically going to pre prepare our flight controller to then um, enable us to solder up our receiver, the VTX and the camera. Make that job easier, right? I'm not going to be installing or configuring Betaflight in this video. I'm going to do a separate video on that. Mostly because I don't want to have this video be an hour long as well, right? I hope that makes sense. So, how do I go about installing my flight controller or the stack? If, if by the way, you uh, aren't familiar with these diatone stacks, I've done a review of this specific stack a couple of weeks ago and I'll have a link uh, in the upper right corner to my review of this stack in case you are interested. So, after I've installed my 4-in-1 ESC, I have, by the way, checked if all motors run by now, but you can do that at a later stage as well. So, at this point I want to hook up or install, physically install the flight controller. What do I do? The first step is actually to down, find and download the documentation for your flight controller. Now Dietone does provide uh, good documentation, mostly in the form of a, a JPEG with a diagram. I'll uh, show you. So what you do is find that documentation. Most of the times it's, uh, it can be found on the product page at Dietone or the vendors like Banggood where I got this one from. And you then download it and you save it on your computer or on your Google Drive, wherever you want to save it. See, maybe you'll be having this quadcopter for a year, uh, maybe even longer, who knows. And by the time you want to change something to your flight controller, maybe hook up a GPS, who knows. Um, you don't know if maybe Dietone isn't even around anymore by that time or this product has been discontinued and the product page deleted, right? So yeah, for those reasons I always save the documentation and uh, well, in that case you won't even have to look for it if you want to change things, right? Saves you from googling it uh, as well. So that's the first thing. 
And after that, I could physically install, again, the flight controller into my frame, like so, and uh, do my soldering like this. Definitely possible, but some solder pads, especially these ones, just behind the camera, those are actually for your, uh, for your camera, can be hard or harder to reach with your soldering iron or uh, maybe your vernier calipers, your uh, pliers. So this is simply inconvenient. Uh, these standoffs I have here, the metal standoffs, aren't super duper high, but maybe yours are. Those will also be in the way of your soldering. So it's completely inconvenient to do at least your pre-tinning while the flight controller is in your frame like this. So what we'll do is pre-tin the solder pads you see on the edge of our flight controller here. As you can tell, on this flight controller at least, most of the solder pads are on the edge of the flight controller and that's simply convenient. Uh, you can re actually reach them with your soldering iron. That's why they put those solder pads at the edge of the flight controller. And uh, well, I'm only going to be pre-tinning the solder pads I'm actually going to be using. Uh, well, you could potentially pre-tin all solder pads, but I don't really know why you would. <laughs> yeah, uh, so when you first look at the documentation of this flight controller or any flight controller, and if you are new to this, uh, it might be baffling. Uh, it might look very, very complicated. There's a ton of wires to hook up. If you first look at the diagram of any flight controller, it looks as if you're going to be soldering up a hundred wires to your flight controller. Now, obviously that's not the case, but still it can look or be daunting. Now, lucky for all of us, you won't be using every single feature of any of these flight controllers. In fact, I'm going to be building a pretty simple is that true? Yeah, pretty simple setup. Maybe at a later stage I'll do a video on how to add a GPS. Right, that might be uh, valuable. In fact, yeah, probably I will. But to simply build a flying FPV quadcopter, we don't need a GPS. And we don't need LEDs basically either. It's nice, but, but we won't. <laughs> it won't fly any better because of the LEDs. Or a buzzer. A pretty simple addition, obviously a buzzer, but we don't really need it to be flying. So that makes things simpler. And if you simply tackle every single little sub job separately, you'll see that things are reasonably simple. And the first thing I want to know is how to uh, solder up my receiver. Now, in my case, I'm going to be using an uh, iBus receiver. But this is an F7 flight controller and IBUS or SBUS doesn't really matter. I can use the same solder pads for IBUS, IBUS or SBUS. On other flight controllers that might not be the case. Again, with this F7 flight controller I can use an SBUS pad, solder pad for an IBUS receiver. Now, if you look at the diagram you see at the top left which is over here. You'll see a ground over here, which is what we'll use for our receiver. Then a 5 volt out, which is also what we'll use for our receiver. Then a PPM pad, which is not what we'll use. This is not a PPM receiver. I'm actually, I actually don't really know why they still add PPM pads. Oh well. And the 4 pad over here is your SBUS pad. So that's one I'll use as well. And my receiver has telemetry. And for that I will use UART2, which is conveniently located over here. And there's a reason for it. You um, are, for, for, at least for this flight controller, intended to use that UART2 for your telemetry. So let me see the TX2, transmit 2 is over here and that's where I'll hook up my telemetry. If you are using an FR Sky receiver with an F 
F-Port protocol, you will only need to solder up your receiver to this T2 pad. Yeah, and, and power obviously, 5 volt and ground. But you won't need to use that S-Bus pad. Okay, so that's one job. You obviously need a receiver and we've got that figured out. Four pads on, on this row will use for that. The next thing I want to use is a camera. This is an FPV quadcopter and cameras can <laughs> are very, very convenient in an FPV setup. So this here is the front of our flight controller. And in most FPV setups, yes, the camera is at the front of the quadcopter. Well, actually, there are FPV quadcopters with a, uh, a camera at a different location. However, in, <laughs> in most cases, the camera will be at the front and the solder pads you will be using for your camera are conveniently located at the front. So over here, let me see, right next to this white connector is uh, firstly the camera in. So here is where you'll uh, solder up the, the video in, the, most times the yellow wire on your camera. Second one is the ground, so second from the right is the ground, and then in this case we'll have a 9 volt out. Now I could use a 5 volt out or VCC, but I know that if I use these three pads over here, so the 9 volt out, the ground and the uh, video in, this will work and it'll create a clean setup, right? Um, I'm building the perfect quadcopter in this series, uh, so I'm using proven techniques, right? A proven setup. So again, I know that using these three pads over here will result in a clean video setup. Okay, so we now have the, the pads for our camera and the last thing really, we really need to set up is the video transmitter. And the pads for that are all located over here. Starting with the 9 volt out. Now again for your VTX you can use 5 volts or VCC battery voltage. Again, I know that if I use these pads to power my VTX it'll work. Right? You can use whatever uh, power supply for your VTX. Be sure to know that if you use these pads on this flight controller stack, it'll work. I hope that's uh, clear enough. So 9 volt out, then the second one from the top is ground. Then we've got the TX3, so we'll be using UART3 for our smart audio. Right? All conveniently located uh, together over here. And the fourth pad just behind or just above our uh, USB connector over here is the video out. So that'll be your yellow wire towards uh, your VTX. And okay, so yes, this flight controller, as uh, most flight controllers do, have a lot more pads and uh, you can hook up all kinds of things to a flight controller like this. This is a feature rich flight controller. You've got a lot of UARTs over here. For instance, if you'd want to add a GPS, like I mentioned before. And uh, this is one of the neat little tricks of this flight controller. It has a Bluetooth antenna over here. You can clearly see it. And with that, you can hook up or you can connect to this flight controller with your phone wirelessly and configure it in the field. Definitely very nice. So that's all the pads I'll, I'll need, I'll definitely need. And uh, I'm gonna pre-tin those, so let's see what that looks like. So let me see, uh, first of all I've got uh, the diagram, the documentation of the flight controller uh, on screen and you can't see that but it's just off camera over there, there's my monitor so I can uh, constantly see the diagram and uh, check back and forth to see whether I use the correct pads and I've got my soldering iron over here which is heating up to 380 degrees celsius I've got a thin tip obviously on my soldering uh, iron in the previous video uh, when we installed our 4-in-1 ESC I had a broader tip because the soldering pads on that ESC are a lot bigger. These are all tiny in comparison soldering pads. So I've got a, a thin tip this time. My soldering iron is ready. 
and uh, we'll need some uh, soldering tin and I, I have to state that my soldering tin is pretty thick and it's uh, yeah it's the, the, <laughs> the only kind I have uh, ideally when working uh, with these uh, tiny solder pads you'd want uh, thinner soldering uh, tin oh well I know this will work so it's no biggie but again it's not ideal so on all of our solder pads we want to create a nice puddle of soldering tin definitely make sure to not bridge any gaps between the solder pads that <laughs> will not result in a well-behaved quadcopter that would probably uh, result in a, a puff of smoke when you hook up your battery yeah so after you've installed or pre-tint all these pads go over everything with a, a multimeter to check if you haven't created shorts okay so i've now pre-tint the three pads over here for my camera notice that i'm not going to be using uh, camera controls you can change the camera uh, settings from your flight controller i never do but you can maybe i'll do a separate video on that and uh, there probably are all kinds of videos on that already okay i've um, for you it, the flight controller is actually uh, right side up uh, for me it's upside down but i'm gonna be soldering of uh, pre-tinning the pads for my receiver which are over here the top one is ground and in most cases by the way the ground and 9 volts 5 volts take the longest to heat up but with your iron set to 380 degrees celsius all pads should heat up quickly and you shouldn't have to uh, keep them warm or keep your iron on the pad for more than two seconds maybe i'm pre or doing it longer than a couple of seconds now because i'm also narrating things but if i wouldn't this would be a very quick job so and now i have now pre-tint these three. Oh, i forget i'm forgetting one thing the esbus okay esbus there you go and these are all nice uh, rounded bubbles of uh, shiny soldering tin if they are not shiny um, you've probably got your soldering iron set to a low temperature too low a temperature or the heat transfer wasn't right in that case your tip might uh, be clogged up dirty so this should shouldn't take more than two seconds per pad and it would should result in a nice shiny bubble of soldering tin on the pads okay last pair uh, over here we've got the vtx out and the first one over here is nine volts nine volts and then we've got a ground and then the tx3 for our smart audio uh, so that port we'll be using to uh, change settings on the flight control uh, to the to the vtx the video transmitter and the last pad is our video out so this will send the video signal including the osd to our video transmitter the vtx hard cheeky day now i'll first what i'll first do is uh, uh, inspect them visually with a uh, magnifier and then make a round through all these pads with a multimeter i must say that i basically already know from looking an atom like this that i haven't created shorts but uh, yeah uh, better safe than sorry uh, 
By the way, these flight controllers from Matex, this Mamba, do have a, a very elaborate or a very elaborate good a good amount of safety precautions. If you, for instance, have shortened these five volt pads over here or the nine volt pads. Uh, the, the 5 volt bridge won't boot up and you'll see that on the LEDs over here. There's an uh, LED for 5 volt and an LED for 9 volt. Those won't light up. Once you've solved the, the, the short, so removed the, the bridge between pads, uh, the, the flight controller won't be damaged in most cases. I've actually gone ahead and tested that. So I've uh, intentionally created bridges between the 5 volt ground and uh, positive pads and the 9 volt pads. Uh, at that stage obviously that 5 volt uh, system won't work anymore. But after you've removed the bridge, at least on these flight controllers, which is part of the reason why I use the, the Mamba stacks, after you've solved your problem, they'll come back to life. On a lot of other flight controllers or ESCs, you will then have permanently damaged things. So, yeah, um, and, and these stacks from Tytone somehow aren't even uh, very expensive. They are definitely not more expensive than other well-behaved stacks. Oh well, uh, just uh, something uh, to keep in mind uh, when ordering things, I guess. Okay, so we have now pre-tinned all pads and um, we, we're now done with the soldering for now. And that, my friends, leaves us with one job, at least for, for this video, and that is the physical installation of the flight controller into our frame. Actually, the last time we'll put it in. So that's nice. And uh, one choice you'll need to make is um, how many of these silicone washers. The diatone stack comes with a lot of, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them well, uh, but these are silicone washers and they will also act as vibration isolators. So they will raise the stack a little, creating a bit of, uh, well, maybe even a physical isolation between the 4-in-1 ESC and your flight controller. But they'll also act as vibration isolators. Now, what I always do is have one layer of these washers Beneath the flight controller, the 4 one ESC is held down with four nuts, right? Plastic nuts. On top of those, I've got one set of these silicone washers, just one. And then I go and slot our flight controller in place. And yes, the flight controller itself also has grommets, silicone, rubber. Well, anti-vibration grommets, mostly at the bottom, as you probably know. So I'll also add one set or one layer of these semi-transparent silicone rings slash washers above the flight controller. Like so. I'm not sure if you'll be able to actually see it, but uh, well, it should be clear. And after that, I top the entire stack off with plastic nuts. I'll be using these transparent ones. I think these came with the stack, I'm not completely sure. Uh, these are also uh, obviously available in black. But uh, well, these came with the stack, so I'll use them. And uh, to be honest, now the camera is completely in the way. <laughs> uh, just a sec. Now, if you wonder how far or how much you need to torque these nuts down, uh, there's no real science to that, but it definitely makes a difference. See, if you torque them down uh, as far as they'll go, you'll eliminate all the, the use or the function of the rubber or silicone washers and, uh, and grommets. You definitely want to feel a little bit of play left in the flight controller. You won't be able to see it, but there still is a little bit of play in the flight controller. 
And that's what you want. Basically what I do is I uh, screw down these nuts by hand, never with a wrench. And I keep my eye on these silicone uh, washers or rings, the, the purple ones. And once they begin to deform or change shape, that's where I stop. Right? I hope that makes sense. So that's my point of reference. Just as soon as I see them change shape, I stop and that's, well, that's what I always do and that seems to work out well. Maybe you have a different method, a better method that works for you. I would very much value your input in the comment section below or on any other topic in this video. Maybe not for me, but uh, other hobbyists might uh, benefit from your input. So I'll always value your input. Uh, thank you very much in advance. Other than that, I hope this was helpful. In the next video, we're going to be checking and maybe updating the firmware on our 4-in-1 ESC. So not on the flight controller, not Betafly itself, but on our ESCs. And we'll check our motor directions and uh, probably uh, change a couple of motor directions. So that'll be in the upcoming video, should be live in a couple of days. If you are left with questions, don't hesitate to ask. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.